Good day YouTube and welcome to my video which will be a walking tutorial. This will be a part tutorial as there still has to be features added like for instance the air bounce, the ear movement and also the hand movement. What you see on screen though is Debian from Undertale which is redrawn in Don't Stop Style um, which is a game from Clay. And obviously as before I was matched up uh, the various images like for instance the, the legs the body, the head, to a full-size PNG. Um, what I'm going to do though is add meshes to the images, um, as I'll be doing single images, for instance, arms and legs instead of separate ones, and be using the meshing tool as you see on screen here. And what they have there is a new feature, which is auto-generate mesh outline, which still isn't where it should be, but for smaller images, uh, it probably is quite fine um, to auto-generate all those meshes. And once I've used that, I actually had to add more meshes to complete it. As you can see, they're just moving around, even though I can't see what's going on there. This is also the point of the video, instead of a tutorial, is sort of to discuss what I've done wrong in this animation. Now, obviously, stretching out uh, these vertices to match around my image without distorting it, so that once I edit or add the bones, in that it will edit the image as is. Now again, I've edited this image um, under all of the other ones, like for instance the head and the, and the legs and the arms, which is sort of detrimental to what I need to do. So, what I should have done there is actually isolated this image, the body, so that I could add this images, uh, these vertices individually. Eventually, I clued up on that and I actually switched off all of the on the scene panel. No, nothing wrong with that, although it's a very, very wrong process. Um, the faster way of doing that um, is if you actually edit the mesh, or if your mesh editing options open, you can actually switch it off or separate or isolate this image that you're interested in by simply unticking the deform tool or deform option instead of going one by one and selecting uh, a visual state off. Just looking in there on the edit mesh tool there at the bottom, uh, the deform option is ticked. And obviously, just untick that to finalize that. The next part I want to get at here is adding the bones um, to the image itself. I'm just doing by selecting them, but most importantly, is testing them to see how it actually interacts with the PNG image. We can see there that um, it doesn't. It it looks quite well, although there are some other adjustments to be to be done. There, as we can see, the lines actually distort. So what I'm going to do here is just edit the weights using the weight tool. Okay, the top right of your screen there, we can see there's the edit weight tool as shown before. And simply selecting the bone I'm interested in, and also the uh, the actual node or vertice and just decreasing or increasing that um, amount there. Obviously in the property panel there it actually displays what the percentages are for the bone to the weight or to the actual um, vertice. Noting that at the bottom I've decreased it to zero and on the side to slightly less. We can see there on the bottom of the shirt there it actually distorts the image quite uh, badly. So obviously I have to increase the top bone's influence on those parts. Just to note as well that if you're using this method to animate your character, like for instance um, distorting an image, it is not meant for excessive um, distortion as I've shown there. It's just minor adjustments, like for instance breathing or and in the case of arms, you can actually do it quite excessively because it actually does work. Now I am increasing the influence of the orange bone there on those weights just to sort of move those line work or the line work away from the edges so it doesn't skew the image as shown before. Obviously, just testing this again, we can see it looks a lot better, and I can actually say that I'm quite satisfied with this. I'm um, going to speed up the rest of the process, including some of the arms and the legs. Um, so, do you guys don't have to sit here and watch me muck about? Well, 
what I found though in the arms is to add additional vertices there um, to the ones existing as this actually gives a more smoother bend animation. Now the weights of these bones um, automatically actually come out quite nicely. I'm um, just looking through them after I bind them. Um, obviously if you can test them, you can see it's quite a nice smooth bend, very believable. And what I'm going to do though is just make sure that this arm matches the other arm in terms of its weight. Not exactly, but sort of similar. Um, you can see just by selecting one of those um, vertices, um, the percentage is there for the green is quite low at 3 and moving upward moves from 50 to obviously to 100 where it's fully fully influenced Now, all of my bones have been added and the meshes has been made. I can actually move over to animation. And what you see there at the bottom is a picture that I've just got here, which is a um, keyframe for a walking animation. You can easily find it by Googling walk cycle animation. Noting that the key points here is the contact, recoil, passing, and high points. Um, I am going to match all of them up and create an indefinite loop with this animation. But I'm not going to match it specifically or accurately to the teeth. What I'm going to do though is just place the image lower and sort of matches up to where I need to be. I think something important to note here um, when you start animation is that your first and last frame is going to be exactly the same, especially if you want to make an indefinite loop of a walking animation. Very importantly is to make sure that you capture the keyframes. You'll notice though that the keyframe button that we, that we used earlier is gone and it's sort of displayed over three edges for the move, rotate and scale. The key still remains the same which is K but just to be sure make sure that you rotate each bone even if it's slightly so that you can actually tag it in your first frame. And what I'm going to do now is just um, move the body a little bit although this video doesn't focus on that, that will be a second video, we're looking at overlapping actions and secondary actions. This one is just to form the basis of the walk animation, which is going to be my leg, feet and arm movements. I'm spacing this out um, incorrectly though, it's just to build or to start the animation. Later on I'll be spacing it more correctly. Noticing that on this animation I already made a mistake. I'm noting at the arm movements where the shoulder moves forward if the arm moves forward and the shoulder moves backward as the arm moves backward. Um, that's something I added in the final the final animation which is um, on my YouTube channel on the Dragon Boast Test playlist. Um, we actually move those or the shoulders forward and backwards depending on the arm movement. I'm going to speed this up, but I don't want you guys to sit here the whole time. Um, it's quite a repetitive process, so from here and I guess you guys will get the, get the picture for this. Okay, so once you've got the initial setup uh, done for your animation, um, obviously there's going to be a review process, uh, process, process. We have to review each frame and see actually how it how it interacts with each other, if it's correct, if it's smooth, it's not. Now the spacing here won't accurately actually show that. Um, obviously the more accurate the spacing or correct the spacing and the more fluid animation, the more easily you'll be able to see the impurities. Now obviously on this one I couldn't see a lot, but as I move this um, or fixed up the timing, I could actually see quite easily what's wrong here. And the first one there is the first frame, the last frame is the same. And this is also where you should make sure that all your frames have been, um, or your bones has been captured as a frame, because I've copied the first and the first frame to the last frame, and then my arm didn't actually go as planned. That is because the second bone in the arm, um, the one preceding the first one, um, actually didn't capture in the timeline, and that actually didn't work so well. Obviously you can see I've squished up the 
the spacing of the animation it actually looks a lot better than, than what it, uh, what it was and I can more easily see what's wrong in this animation now I think that this one would typically or spacing like this will be used in a YouTube channel with a static image like what I've done with the oxygen not included video where I actually overlaid uh, the overall scene over a existing image now for say for instance game assets it will be more on a single line so it will be static movement so finishing that up we can see it's static movement now where my character Timmy walks on a single position now on this we can see there's a lot of errors in here like for instance the hand twitching the leg twitching um, also the the PNG sequence or draw order for my foot uh, the right foot and the right leg is not correct so obviously that's going to be um, final editing just moving that up and replaying animation and reviewing that sequence and I'm just checking the first and the last frame but I'll copy the, the very first frame to the last or the end of the animation and you're going to notice that just because that secondary bone has not been captured that left arm actually swings under the scarf and under the head which is not correct now I didn't notice that at first only later on when I fixed this animation and, and actually published the final one so if you're interested please go check it out just to note as well that I did add the Dragon Boats file to that video so you're free to download it looking there at the actual bones we can see that the rotated keyframe has not been selected with that blue or marked with that blue marker there. Now if I want to fix this last frame, I'm never going to be able to create an indefinite loop because it's always going to twitch um, to the next frame. So make sure you double check that and also just check in your timeline if all the frames has been captured. Thank you for watching this video. If you if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe.